Hello and welcome to another edition of Roaring Records Tutorials. Today we are going to be uh, continuing our discussion of uh, equalizers. Um, if we think about equalizers last time in the first video with the filters, we talked about how we can use the filters to reduce the um, audio frequency either on the high end or the low end by just eliminating it and cutting it all the way out. Um, so today we're going to focus a little more on the tone shaping equalizers, both a graphic and a para parametric EQ, so that we can have two different types of equalizers in Soundtrap and really shape the tone of the item that we are looking to um, use the equalizer on. So one thing that I want us to look at first and think about is what an EQ actually does and define a few terms here that should be able to help us um, understand, especially the parametric EQ better. So if we think again about our frequency spectrum, we can go from 20 hertz, which is 20 cycles per second of sound, to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. That is the limit of our human hearing. Now, if we thought about the filters the other day, they kind of looked like this, and they eliminated high frequency and low frequency by uh, shaping in like this. So this area would be eliminated, this area would be eliminated. But that's not the only shapes we have the advantage to choose. We can also kind of get a parabolic shape, or one might call this a bell-shaped curve, that looks like either one of these options. Now in a lot of equalizers that are very graphic heavy, you will notice that there is actually a dot in the center of this line. And that dot is what you drag around and pull in different ways and shapes to make different um, EQ decisions. But uh, this dot is actually a function of three different equalizer choices. And in a parametric EQ, you want to be able to control the frequency that is targeted. Uh, you want to be able to control the gain. And you want to be able to control the Q factor. Now, the Q factor is what it's often called. But uh, in Soundtrap, you're going to see that represented by a button that looks like this. So either a wide parabola or a narrow parabola. A lot of times if you are uh, doing additive EQ where you're adding stuff, you want to think wide. If you're doing subtractive EQ, you want to think more on the negative side. So what does the frequency decide? Well, if you grab this dot and you're sliding it around, the frequency is its right to left motion. It's what actual sound frequency you're targeting with this additive, in this case, property or this uh, parabola that goes up. So the frequency actually moves this parabola left or right. Whereas the gain factor is deciding how high or low this dot goes. So if you're in the positive gain, you're doing additive EQing or boosting the signal in that frequency zone. If you're in negative gain like this, you're attenuating the signal or removing some of that frequently frequency from the particular signal. So that's negative gain. So the knob for gain will have zero in the top center and then positive is going this way and negative or subtractive EQ is going this way. Whereas frequency is just moving this knob up or down. And then the Q factor actually determines, like I said, how wide this is. So if you want a wider knob, you're going to go to the wide side. If you want a more narrow knob, which may look something like this, then you're going to go over to the uh, narrow side. So um, that being said, that's kind of how the EQ functions. Now we want to actually see it in progress. So here's a little guitar track that uh, I've been working with. <laughs> Now, 
Now to get to the equalizer, I'm going to click on the guitar track. I'm going to come in here to add effects. There are two effects choices that I can make right here that are equalizers. One of them, the first we're going to look at, is the graphic equalizer. A lot of times, uh, a full-on graphic equalizer will have 31 of these different sliders, but each slider represents a specific target frequency. You cannot change that target frequency. So here on the low side of the equalizer, we are dealing with the low frequencies or the bass frequencies and here we're dealing with the treble frequencies the final output is a kind of gain knob of sorts so we can actually begin to shift these up or down to get different sounds so i'm going to let the guitar track play and i'm just going to manipulate these different sliders to change the tone of the guitar track Okay, so as you could hear, all the different little things I made highlighted different frequencies and different actual tonal characteristics of this particular guitar. So I think um, that EQ kind of explains itself. You can actually kind of filter with this EQ if you begin to remove uh, specific uh, sliders here. You can actually draw out some of the EQ um, and kind of create a filter. Not exactly, but somewhat. Now, we're going to look at the other option. This is the parametric EQ. And this is more what we were just talking about in the previous part. So here we have a high frequency, meaning it will uh, move the parabola just in the upper frequencies, kind of from a mid-high to a very high. You can add gain to make it boost the frequencies, or you can reduce gain to make it take away those frequencies. And you can choose how wide or narrow that particular parabola is. So once again, I'm going to just play the guitar track and putz around with this so that you can see how we can manipulate frequency, how we can manipulate gain, and how we can manipulate the width of the uh, parabola that's being added or removed. So this is the parametric EQ function.
And then when you're done in the end, you can choose how loud or soft that individual uh, sound is. So it's kind of like having a gain knob at the very end that you can adjust uh, the volume for. So uh, this has been both a graphic equalizer and a parametric equalizer and what's actually happening in the background. If you enjoyed this video and don't mind, hit subscribe and the like button below.